Hey, me again. Welcome back. Uh, there's a lot of cameras coming out this month. Wow. I, you know, Techtober. Always heard that term thrown around. Didn't realize it was a thing until today. Guys, again, we've been blessed by the camera gods with yet another model, another camera from our friends over at DJI, the Osmo Pocket 2. All right, let's dive in, take a look at what's in the box. This is the creator bundle. So you do get a few more things than you would get if you just bought the camera on its own. What are those extra things? Well, one of those things is a lav mic and a tiny little cute little dead cat. So these two things go together and there's actually a hole on this little slip case up top. So you can actually store it like this in your bag, which is kind of cool. I feel like this case is very impressive when you dive in and look a little deeper. Inside the case, you've got two mounts for different connectors to your camera, and you've got a magnetic slot for a wide angle lens. Now that wide angle lens, so it snaps on like this, and you just give it a little bit of a push and that snaps on and it is secure. So being able to just take that lens back off and place it inside the little magnetic tray in the case, that's great. Cause if that wasn't there, where would you put that? So having it tucked in there is nice along with the connectors that let you connect the camera to the phone. This little piece right here with the joystick and the button that actually slides off. You come back to the case, you grab the connection for the phone that you have. Then you're able to sync with the app, transfer your footage, save your stuff, look at your clips. That's a really cool way of being able to plug in directly to the phone without having to tether a cable or remember the cable. This stuff is all stored in the case. All right, so this little piece right here is called the do it all handle. This apparently attaches as an extension to the handle, providing built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, audio jack, wireless mic receiver, external speaker, and a tripod mount. So there's a lot of things going on with this. Pull the bottom off. Yep, there's a little USB-C connection that goes on. It extends it, makes it a little bit longer. I prefer using it with the longer grip, to be honest. Push that down, disconnects, and you can put the tripod mount on the bottom. That clips into place, and that lets you screw in the tiny little tripod. Now look at this thing. It kind of spins out, screws into the bottom, um, would I use this to just record myself talking? Probably. Also for a lot of the time-lapse features, if you're gonna have it sitting there for an extended period of time, I would think that's gonna be uh, quite handy there. And that is pretty much everything that comes in the creator bundle when you get the DJI Osmo Pocket 2. So after you've charged this up using this cable, hit the button on the side right here, and that brings this little thing to life. It does its little gimbal check, turns around, looks at you, nods twice. It moves side to side. You can hold down this button, you can lock the gimbal just like you would with an actual <laughs> full-size RS2 or RSC2. It follows, it tracks. Let's see how we're doing. It's super bright in here. I've got the tripod on and I'm using the built-in audio. But this is typically what it would look like without a wide angle, without their mic just everything built in 4K 24 frames per second. Now, if we were to add the wide angle lens to this, that's good. Now, let's turn on the little handheld lavalier mic. Now, if I was to hold this around, around where I would probably wear a lapel, that's what the audio sounds like with the included lapel mic. Do I wanna actually connect this to my T-shirt? No, I would never wanna walk around like this. But I mean, if I was standing over here on the other side of the room and I wanted to explain something about this table, that's when the lapel mic would actually come in handy. But I would prefer to actually tape this on the inside of my shirt or connect it to the inside of a lapel on a jacket so that you don't see this, which looks like I've got a hamster just nestled in my neck. So um, super handy, but gotta find a cool creative way to actually conceal it. Let's turn this off for a second. Back on the normal mic, this is how it looks. I'm a fan of this light. I mean, this looks pretty good right now. So that is with the wide angle lens on here, and this is without the wide angle lens. Now, another feature to mention with this camera is the sensor is bigger. You're getting a bigger sensor and you're getting a wider aperture, which is letting in more light, and just a bigger sensor is always better when it comes to cameras. That's good, how stable is this? Let's check how stable this is. Oh, 
Here's what's cool about this camera as well. If you didn't have a huge studio setup and you wanted to vlog and have some kind of an in-studio camera, this might be a great option with its tripod and the Bluetooth connector and the lapel mic. That stuff might work for you. So if you were to use this in you know, tandem with a light, you can take that existing wide-angle lens, and we'll do this again. You can see how that looks. We'll snap that into place, boom. That looks a lot better. You flip that switch on. You might be able to place it just off frame, like right here. And you could use this as a studio camera, as a main angle. And it's a tight, small little package. So depending on how you create videos or the needs that you have as a creator, uh, this could be a great option that works both in studio and for vlogging a myriad of different, of different purposes, which is great when it comes to a camera more can do the better. Now again, I haven't even seen this footage at this very moment that I'm recording, so I hope it sounds good, but from the tiny little screen that you have, this could be this could be a cool option. Unless of course I get it into the computer and then realize when I'm editing that I don't like it at all, but I, I don't really foresee that happening. Let's always keep story in the back of our minds too. When we're reviewing all these cameras, it's easy to get caught up in the little minutias, the little, the little details that sometimes overwhelm the main cause of why we're using these cameras in the first place. You've got a couple different shooting modes. The screen is accessed much like any kind of touch screen. You swipe over from the left to get to settings. You swipe over from the right to get to media clips. You can swipe down to select different things. So right now going over to the video mode, it looks like we've got 4K, 16 by 9, 24, 25, 30, 48, 50 and 60, so 4K 60 on here, that's pretty cool. You've got 2.7K, and then you've also got 1080p and 16.9, and you've got all the same frame rates up to 60. Now, if you go back over, a single tap on this button down here switches from photo mode to video mode, so that's pretty fast. Gives you an audible beep so you can tell which mode that you are in. Now, there's also a slow-mo feature. You can just get to there by swiping up on the screen and then swiping over to get into it. And it only shows you resolution is 1080p and it says four times or eight times speed. You've got time-lapse mode, slow-mo, videos, photos, and panos. I think this would be a good little camera if you didn't have a smartphone that was doing incredible video quality. Something like this might be able to keep up with the new tech in phones. Is it gonna rival the quality of your mirrorless or DSLR? No, it's not. It's kind of like having an action cam and a smartphone stuffed into one in your pocket. You see, with a smartphone, you've got great quality video and great quality photos, but you don't have the gimbal that you're gonna have on the Osmo Pocket 2. So that's where this kind of finds the medium ground. It finds that middle space and says, I live here. Uh, you could also get pretty creative with it. Probably pop the bottom off, put the tripod mount on the bottom, connect a light stand to this, extend that light stand as high as possible, and you could most certainly fake some drone shots based on the fact that this does have a gimbal. So that's a cool idea. Might have to try that. And one of the things I also like about this camera is when you turn it off, the gimbal locks in its closed position for about 30 seconds like that, where it's not gonna go loose and that lets you slide it back into its case perfectly without having to move the gimbal head or move it at all. That's a nice feature, I love that. And then you clip your mic back on top and everything basically fits inside this nice little package. Then you need a little bag for your accessories, but this, everything in your fists right here is everything you would need to make some cool videos, get some cool time lapses, have that extra piece of media that could be working for you in the background while you create content somewhere else with another piece of equipment. That's where I would find this being handy. So that's your first look at the Osmo Pocket 2. We did a few little tests inside the office here and there just to have fun, but if you'd like to see a more extensive review and see how good this footage can look in optimal conditions, leave me a comment below. Let me know if this camera is something that you'd be interested in and where you would use it and where it fits in that spectrum for you. So guys, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button if you like this video. Smash it if that's something that you're into. Subscribe if you aren't already. And, and I will see you in the next video. Probably reviewing another camera. Okay, Techtober. It's, uh, it's a thing.